Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning news about what's going on in the markets. And I'm going to lay it all out to you and you make the decision. But uh, in all honesty, uh, it's just a Friday. So first up, this happened yesterday. Biden will seek a tax increase on the rich to fund a child care and education. This is the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and uh, why this really has caused mass panic when there probably shouldn't be. On top of that, I'm going to talk about how this first bill we talked about could just be a distraction for one of the main bills that just came about, which House Democrats passed the bill to make D.C. the 51st state. Still has to get to the Senate, but uh, I got to tell you, this is where it all comes down to sleight of hand and magicians using their slight of appearance about what is going on. So we'll take a look at those two things, and then we're going to bring in uh, Sheehan Chandrasekhar, who is our everybody's favorite crypto CPA, to calm everybody down about what is going on with this bill. But first, let's take a look at what the heck happened in the market yesterday, huh? Crazy. So we had a market cap of uh, over two two trillion, and now we lost uh, 150 billion. Eh. What are you going to do? So uh, <clears throat> again, traditional markets, uh, when, once this, this story broke, the traditional market just took a huge dive. And uh, in our market, eh, we lost $150 billion, But, uh, you know, hey, this is crypto. And uh, we are still affected uh, by the tides of uh, different things that are going on outside of our realm of control. So uh, we've got Bitcoin price, 49,000. And one thing I want to talk to you about, trade the chain, sentiment analysis, right? Takes a look at all the different things that are going on in the internet, mostly Twitter and uh, the uh, the websites for uh, exchanges and cryptocurrency and whatnot. There still is, I want to show you a sentiment of what people are really feeling about what's going on. Let me blow this up so you can see it. This was uh, surprising to me. And that is, do you see that daily sentiment for Bitcoin? Bearish. I'm not surprised on that. But what I am surprised is the neutrality that's going on in the top four or five uh, currencies. A couple of bearish here, but still very neutral. And people are not really flipping out. And there, even there's some a little bit of bullish here and there and some bearish whatnot. So who's, who's very bullish? Who is this? Pirate chain. Well, I got to get some of that. That's that's enough. I've been covering. I've been on trade chain for like ten days straight, and it's always pirate chain going. Uh, you know, very positive sentiment. I'm gonna take a. I'm actually gonna have to take a, a video on this one. But yeah, so I mean, Bitcoin dropped below fifty thousand. We're at forty nine. People were saying if it dropped below fifty, it was going to forty five. But it uh, went to forty eight and picked right back up. Ethereum is still twenty three seventeen. Binance Coin five hundred two. And you can see right here in twenty four hours. Yeah, there was a big dip, but if you were like me, you're just like, thanks. And yesterday, what did I do? Uh, I bought uh, Cardano, I bought StormX, and I bought Voyager. Now, if you watched my video yesterday on Voyager of what's going on, I didn't say anything about how you know awful the tokenomics was. I was just talking about the exchange itself and what was going on. I still believe in the team, still believe in everything. So that's a different story. Watch the video. I'll link it at the very end. But uh, things are going pretty good in, in all honesty. I mean, yeah, we lost a, a pretty good uh, market cap. But um, look, we, me and you, have really taken our brunts. And this is just like, it was affecting some people, but for us, we, <laughs> we've been here, give us the facts and we'll go from there. So let's just jump in and see, and see what everybody was flipping out about over everything. So Joe Biden came out, President Joe Biden came out and said, look, I'm going to tax the living heck out of uh, people who make more than a million bucks for their capital gains, which is really bad, right? For, uh, for people who make a million dollars. And uh, that's awful. And this is what he said. He goes, look, uh, I'm going to, this isn't a direct quote. He said, but this is a, from the uh, paraphrase. I'm going to raise taxes on capital gains, the proceeds of selling an asset like a stock or a boat or cryptocurrency for people earning more than a million. This is very vague. I will just say this, and Sheehan's going to talk about it in a second. Uh, effectively increasing the rate that pay on that income to 39.6% from 20%. So basically doubling, and this is long-term uh, capital gains, apparently, right? It's, it's very jumbled and very muted. But uh, again, I'll remind you, and we'll talk about this again, Janet Yellen uh, came out not too long ago, two or three months ago, and said, hey, we're going to tax you on your unrealized uh, capital gains. And people are like, what? And she just said that in passing, and then she kind of re retracted later, but that even caused a big dip. So again, when people say news doesn't move the markets, you're wrong. News does move the market, and that's just the truth. So this is what's going on. We don't really have much information. This is just something that's, you know, it's like, hey, I'm thinking about doing it. 
if you're outside of the United States, first of all, you know, it has to get through the House of Representatives, which this bill did right here. But then after that, it has to be uh, talked about and actually agreed upon by Senate. And uh, right now, all the senators, it's a direct 50-50 split in the United States. We've got like, you know, 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans. And if they all vote on the party lines, then the person that would actually break that vote would be the vice president, who is also Democrat. So if this actually goes through, oh, okay, uh, then off we go. I, I, I can't tell you if it is or it isn't. The real question is, is when does it go into effect? And I'll let Sheehan talk to you about that. So, House Democrats, this is, but this is what, what I was really thinking about. He just came out and said it. There's really no bill coming forth. There's, like, there's nothing on paper, but this has already gone through. House Democrats passed the bill to make D.C. the 51st state in, in the U.S. And if you're outside the U.S., it doesn't apply to you. It doesn't really matter. This does uh, because we just saw what happened with the price of cryptocurrency. This affects everybody. Uh, but if you're like me, you're just like, great, thanks for the uh, discount. So, uh, da -da -da. I'm not going to, this is all political stuff. I'm not going to read it. This, let me just talk to you real quick. So here's the thing. The reason why this went through, debatable, right? But it does look like it's a little bit of a, of a power type of grab. And people can debate this all the time. I don't really care. But Democrats really want this. And that's fine. You know, that whatever it is. But to me, it kind of feels like Joe Biden's like, all right, so we're going to do this thing with capital gains and money and all the things that are happening and watch over here. And what's this? And what's this behind your, oh, uh, 51st state. To me, it's just like, like magician sleight of hand. So in all honesty, they, they got this through the House of Representatives. Now they have to get it through Senate, but this is a little bit different. They have to have, uh, I think it's like 60 uh, votes or whatever else. So we'll see if this actually goes through. I think, in quite all honesty, is that if you're all about negotiation and you know how this works in, in, in Congress and going forth, uh, you don't start with your real number. You start super high, then you start to work things around, then you go that way. Because uh, just because you know they say, well, there's, you know, these, there's, there's Democrats in there, they're going to jam it right through, not so. Uh, it's all about political power and what you can actually get later on for what you really want, whatever that is. So if you want to spend all your capital on this one, go right ahead. But uh, on different things where you have to have some kind of supermajority, it's not going to go through. These are just my, my musings. Um, I think that there will be a tax raise. There has to be because that's, what's, that's the whole thing with this helicopter money that we got. Someone's going to pay for it and it's going to be you and me and that's just how it is. So what I really want to do is just kind of break this down and just tell you like this. When in doubt, zoom out. There's been a lot of different things that have happened in this market, a lot of different things that have uh, made people panic and whatnot, but you just have to sit back and go, what's really going on? Who does this really affect? And how can I use this to my advantage? So what I wanna do is I wanna bring in Shian Chandra Zakar, and we're gonna talk about uh, the you know accounting side of this and what he has seen in the past at, at, as far as raising of taxes, since he is an expert. And let's just jump in and uh, talk to him. All right. So everybody, so we took a look at what's going on in the uh, current news cycle. And uh, thankfully, uh, our man here, Sheehan Chandra Sakara, everybody's favorite accountant, <laughs> as far as cryptocurrency goes, was uh, gracious enough to come on the show and just answer a few questions. Sheehan, thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yet again, my man. Yeah. Yet again, here we are. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, quickly share my screen and uh, just to make sure everybody uh, a quick recap, tax rates for long-term capital gains. Remember, long-term is over, if you hold, hold everything for a year, then here's, then here's what we have. And then short-term, if you sell before a year, then you're going to pay pretty much just like it is in the uh, normal tax rates, only for Americans, of course. So uh, long-term cap gains, uh, it just depends. Uh, you, could, you could pay, if, you're, if your filing status is, is single and you make... $39,099, then you pay 0% rate on your cap gains. And then it just kind of goes over. But really, if you're looking at it, 15% is up to 441,000, which is a lot. And over that is 20%. Head of household, almost the same thing, uh, to 469. Uh, married filing jointly, 496. And marrying filing separately, uh, over 248,000. So just keep uh, in mind of that. And if you're all selling it short term, then it's pretty much just whatever you make. And the top percentage is 37%, which as we talked about, it's going to probably go up to 39.6 or somewhere around there. And that's only for people who make over, you know, half a million dollars. So that's a nice little recap. And I brought on Sheehan for a little bit of history. 
and and he'll talk about that and then what this all could potentially mean because we have no facts right now we have no facts and people running around like a chicken with their head cut off so Sheehan, take it away uh tell us what's really going on or potentially could go on yeah uh, i guess the big news is that you know if you look at media like bloomberg and Twitter everywhere everybody's like okay your long-term capital gain rate's gonna go from 20 percent to 39.6 uh, plus another 3.8 percent for net investment yeah. income tax, plus 13.3 for people who live in California. So you could literally end up paying, you know, 50, 40, 55 percent uh, according to what you hear. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a lot of you know unknowns. So let me break down, you know, one by one. So the bidden is is pretty much proposing that if you make over a million dollars your long-term capital gains rate is going to go from 20% to 39.6%. Mm. So first you had to understand, okay, you had to make a million dollars because if you're making less than a million dollars, there's barely any impact for you. It may, there may not even be any impact. Now, I actually wrote an article about this in Forbes and in 2018, uh, IRS received uh, roughly 150 million Form 1040s in individual taxes. And among them, only 540,000 people had uh, adjusted gross income mm. over 1 million. So that means there's less than, you know, 1% of the tax filers who would be subject to that, you know, doubled tax rate if that were to happen again. These are just proposals. Right. So there's just one fight that's going on. Everybody has to pay, you know, 40% tax rate. So that's not going to happen. Uh, mm. If you're a millionaire, there, there's a, a small likelihood. And number two, we don't know yet how that 1 million is going to be applied. We don't know if that 1 million threshold is for taxable income or just a gross income. Is it applied per household, per person? We don't know those things yet. Um, so yeah, so those are, that's, that's what's really happening. And then uh, that's on the long-term capital gain tax side. And for the short-term capital gain tax side, the highest tax rate we have right now is 37%. And Bidden is proposing to increase it from 37 to 39.6% for the highest income bracket. And again, 37 to 39.6, it's not a big deal. It's a slight increase, but I guess the people are uh, worrying about this long-term capital gain tax. Yeah. The TLDR here is that if you, if you don't have a million dollars, just don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, we're, so for, if you're less than a million, not a big deal. And then I, I, I was thinking about it because in this, I think in this bull run, we're gonna see a lot more millionaires come about as the bull run sure. starts to continue. So the question I have for you was, and, and you explained this to me quite well. I'll I have to do it again. If you wanted to cash out $999,999 worth of crypto, would you then be taxed at 20% based on what we know? And then maybe at that million threshold, let's say you go, you, you cash out $1 million and $1. So maybe that $1 gets taxed at 40%, but the $999,000 gets taxed at the, the max of 20%. That's what I was hoping for, but you, you had another opinion on that one. So, so the answer to that question, you know, depends on what type of capital gains that you're dealing with. You know, it could be yeah. short term or long term. And again, we are speculating here, so I don't want to, you know, spread, spread any fun. Uh, <laughs> if it is, you know, short term capital gains, uh, that million dollars uh, used to be get, get used to used to have the 37 percent tax rate and now it would be a subject to 39.6 which is not a big deal right. in the grand scheme of things right but the long-term capital gains are it's not like a progressive tax so say that if bidden were to say again i want to stress if bidden if this were to pass and if bidden says everybody whose taxable income is over a million dollars will now be subject to a 39.6 percent you know long-term capital gain tax rate Right. That means that entire one point, you know, one million will be subject to thirty nine point six versus versus twenty percent. Uh, again, I'm speculating here because we don't we, we don't know the actual actual mechanics and, and the specifics. But uh, yeah, well, we'll see. So it could go either way. We just don't know. And then that is like like one of the big things. So so maybe it could, maybe it could, maybe it couldn't. But take us back a little on a little time trip, real quick. Talk to us real quick about Janet Yellen. And maybe three or four months ago, when she came out and said, "You know what? We're looking at uh, unrealized tax gains." Yeah, so this was the other, you know, tax fraud that that we saw in 2021 uh, Q1. So Janet Yellen came and said, um, "We are considering, you know, taxing your unrealized gains, meaning those, you know, appreciated assets which you haven't sold, 
I, I yeah. haven't sold. Um, yeah, I mean, in the beginning, I was like, okay, this is never going to happen because, you know, first of all, this is going to create so much issues and it's not, there's not an like equitable thing. I know right. taxes suck, but then when they introduce <laughs> these laws, you know, they, they, it has to be equitable. So if you were to, you know, introduce, you know, unrealized gain taxes, then you should be able to take the write-off for unrealized losses. And if that were to happen, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will have unrealized losses and meaning they can write off things without realizing any losses. And at the end of the day, the government might be losing out. And mm -hmm. the second problem with that approach is that, I mean, you could have unrealized gains, but if, if they're taxing on you, you know, how are you going to come up with cash to, to pay uh, the taxes on the unrealized gains because you haven't sold anything. So those are the two reasons why, you know, that unrealized gain tax, you know, would, would not come. That type of taxing system, you know, does exist if you elect to do so. And, you know, there's these hedge funds and very high net worth individual who can be elected to, uh, you know, be taxed under unrealized gains. Mm -hmm. But those are edge cases, and it's not going to be it's not going to be like a mainstream tax thing. Uh, in my opinion, yeah. it's not going to happen. So, yeah, and the the reason I brought this up because when once that story broke, people again lost their minds. There was a little bit of a dip in the market. They're like, yeah. "Oh my God, they're going to start to tax us on unrealized tax gains." Meaning, if you had <laughs> if you bought Bitcoin for five thousand, then it went up to fifty thousand, and it's just sitting there. You haven't sold it. Like you owe us, uh, you know, forty five thousand dollars. Little math here. $45,000 right now, even though you haven't sold it. Like, what the heck? I can't. And just like Sheehan said, well, if you could do the unrealized tax gains, then you can also do unrealized tax losses. And guess what's going to happen there? Well, we're probably going to win in that situation. So, so again, remember, we don't even have the facts right now. And you see everybody just uh, kind of selling, panic selling, because they want to get, you're like, well, I got to sell everything now. And I just don't think that uh, people who have been around the block for, for a bit of time probably are like, you know what? I'll wait it out because uh, I've seen this whole uh, dog and pony show before. The, the, the last question, which I don't know if, if you can answer this, but uh, because, you know, Sheehan with all the different tax laws that, that come about, I mean, you see them, you, you see them all, all come through, but over time, let's say that they, first of all, let's say this actually gets uh, through uh, the House of Representatives, right? Yeah, okay, sure. And then it, it goes through the Senate and Senate just says, you know what, up and down, straight up and down, we're going to pass this law. And then, you know, there's a tiebreaker and whatever else, and, and that actually goes through. If that, if that law goes through this year, the question I have is, and this is, this is a debate, will they retro it till the very beginning of the year or could it go in effect that day or could it go in effect to like uh, later on? And that's if they even push this through. That's the big question. Yeah, it, no, it, it's, it's highly unlikely they're going to introduce laws that are retroactively affected. Like it, it's, it's, it's very unlikely because it's unfair for the taxpayer and, and you know, and so many other reasons. If, something were to happen, it will most likely be effective starting January 1st, 2022. And uh, people will have, you know, okay amount of time to kind of plan their taxes. And if they had to sell stuff, they, they would have time to, to do it before those new laws go into effect. Perfect. So just as my prediction goes, I always said, hey, the bull run is going to run end in, in December. So, hey, <laughs> so maybe this will actually push my, my prediction all the way there. All right, Sheehan, hey, man, I know you're busy. This is tax season. If you are looking for a qualified crypto CPA, this is my man, Sheehan. I definitely trust him. If you got a lot of different questions or you want to work with somebody who's like, hey, I got a lot of things, a lot of things going on in cryptocurrency and my business and my personal, reach out to Sheehan. I'm going to link his information in the description below. And that is it. Sheehan, thanks for coming by. We really appreciate it. Any last words of wisdom for everybody who's freaking out? Uh, just, just don't panic. And nothing has been finalized. And we don't even know the specifics. It's just a proposal. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Sheehan. We appreciate it. All right, let's, see let's jump back. Yeah. All right so I hope that helped. So um, look, uh, this could uh, take a little bit of time to really sort out. Again, we don't have all the information. And uh, I will just say, uh, just, uh, just relax. It's not going to be the end of the world. And like we talked about, who knows what it actually could be. But uh, uh, the final product I think it's gonna be a lot different than what we just heard about. Anyhow, if you like today's video, uh, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, that helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing, a lot of things to talk about <laughs> are time sensitive, just like what we talked about today. And that is it for uh, this episode. So thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate it. See you on the next one.